Bismillah wa salatu wa salam rasulullah wa ba'd. In the name of Allah and in peace and blessings of Allah be upon his messenger as to what follows. Family, friends, foes, haters, and hatets. This is going to be a very short but yet very important video. Now this video comes with a few conditions and I don't give anybody any permission to watch this video without fulfilling these conditions first. So if you plan on watching this video in its entirety, you must fulfill these conditions. And the first is, whether you love me or you hate me, whether you're a Muslim or not, you must put away your differences for this particular video. And the second condition is, you must follow through with the instructions in this video. If you can't do that, then you could just stop watching now and go run around, do whatever you're doing in your life, no harm, no foul. But if you continue watching it, then you mu you're agreeing, essentially agreeing to fulfill these conditions. I'll give you a second to think about that. So Imam Jamil Alameen, AKA H. Rap Brown, was a very integral part of the civil rights movement in the 60s. And he was part of the Black Panther Party, one of the most eloquent speakers there in a high ranking level in the Black Panther Party. Uh, for those of you who don't know, just a quick brief rundown that the Black Panther Party was violently suppressed and, and dismantled by the US government. And in 2002, he got charged with a murder he did not commit, predictably, because they were uh, the government was aggressively going after Black Panthers uh, since they tried to dismantle the Black Panther Party. Uh, even up until uh, I did a video recently in the Abu, to Abu Toba series about um, Asada, Asada, Asada Shakur <laughs> being a political exile. So this stuff is real. So now Imam Jamil Alameen has been in jail for almost 20 years. Okay? Wallahi, it is Aib. It's Aib. Wallahi, Aib. You know, it's very shameful. You know, that Muslims and black people have not been able to get him out. But now there's a, a effort to release him. And these people are not asking for your money. They're not asking for your donations. They're only asking for a simple thing from you. And that's why if you watched it till this point, you have agreed to follow these instructions. So I'm going to show you exactly what they want from you. And everybody who's watching this video must fulfill your promise if you reach this point. So the first step is that you have to click the link. Now, this link is from my Facebook, but I'm going to leave the link in the description. Okay? I'm going to leave the link in the description, and you just click the link. So that's step number one. The second step is to click here where it says to get involved. Once you've clicked that, it gives you two options. You can copy and paste the email, or you can call the number and it gives you a script. So I'm gonna copy and paste the email. I'm gonna grab the emails. And I'm going to take the subject line. I'm going to cut that, paste it here, and I'm going to put my name. Done. So I'm going to delete this, hit send. And the last step is to share this video. And I know that some of you have a problem with me. You don't like me. So if you don't like me, you don't want to share my video, go into the description, copy the link and share that, but share. This is not 
uh, I didn't do this for your entertainment. I made it a trust and a manna on you. This is an amana. If you watch to this point, now you have an obligation to do this. This is a call to action. It's not one of those other type videos. You see how quick I did that. And as for you who are watching this video and you think that you're not going to do this, then we ask Allah to give you as much concern as you have given our Imam Jamil Alameen. Say Ameen. Say Ameen. Hey, Trap Brown, the fifth chairman of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee and Minister of Justice for the Black Panther Party, is one of the most powerful black revolutionaries and human rights activists of the civil rights movement. See, unlike America would have us believe, the greatest problem confronting this country today is not pollution and bad breath. It's black people. It's black people. At the age of 21, Brown as a part of a delegation to the ban action for the civil rights of African Americans, met with President Lyndon B. Johnson. Brown laid the foundations for black political power in the South by fighting against Jim Crow segregation and organizing black voters. The FBI's Cointel Pro program, aimed at disrupting black political movements and neutralizing black messiahs such as Martin Luther King and Malcolm X, targeted Brown in an effort to diminish his growing influence across the nation. In 1967, Brown was falsely charged with inciting riots following a rally speech in Cambridge, Maryland. As a result of Brown's threat to the status quo, Congress passed the H. Brett Brown Law, which made it illegal to cross state lines in order to incite a riot. While serving time in prison, Brown converted to Islam and changed his name to Jamil Abdullah Alameen. Upon release from prison, Jamil Alameen made the Hajj pilgrimage to Mecca and traveled the world to study Islam in West Africa, India, Pakistan, and the West Indies. By the token of time and through the ages, verily man is a loser. Except those who are given to righteousness and who counsel each other to truth and who counsel each other to patience. He returned to Atlanta, Georgia as Imam Jamil al -Amin, to establish a community mosque in the West End neighborhood of Atlanta, notorious for its gang violence and drugs. Imam Jamil, concerned about the social revolution and spiritual upliftment of his community, led a neighborhood cleanup of drugs and prostitution through anti-drug and violence campaigns, and established several social programs while simultaneously unifying the diverse Muslim community in America nationally. The FBI continued to surveil Imam Jamil until this day and looked for any way to pin a crime upon him. Later documents revealed the FBI had a 44,000 page file on him and his community. In May 1999, Imam Jamil was illegally pulled over and charged with impersonation of a police officer for possessing a badge gifted to him by the mayor of Whitehall, Alabama. While out to arrest Imam Jamil, two officers mistakenly shoot at another African-American male, Otis Jackson. As a result, one officer is killed and the other is wounded on the scene. Despite Jackson confessing to the crime publicly on video and matching the description of the shooter from eyewitnesses, the confession has never been mentioned in a single trial of al -Amin's. and factual evidence was left outside of the trial due to judicial misconduct. That you had committed a murder and were involved in the shooting of a cop in March of 2000 in Atlanta, Georgia. Yes. But you weren't arrested for it, were you? No, sir. I was not. In fact, another person was tried and convicted. Jamil al -Amin, yes, sir. Thus, Imam Jamil was sentenced to life in prison in 2002 for a crime he did not commit. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty. Because of the launch of the Conviction Integrity Unit, the Fulton County District Attorney's Office now has the power to reopen Imam Jamil's case and exonerate Imam Jamil based on the clear evidence of his innocence and confessions of the crime. On Tuesday, August 11th, Fonnie Willis unseated 23-year incumbent Paul Howard in the Fulton County District Attorney runoff election. On Monday, August 10th, in response to national and local efforts urging both candidates to reopen the case, Fonnie Willis spoke in support of looking into past convictions. The district attorney's job is to make sure justice is done, not just convict people. That's why, as district attorney, I will always consider information that calls into question past convictions. We implore Paul Howard to cement his legacy on a positive note, but rectifying one of the most egregious wrongs that occurred during his career before he leaves office. 
We would also like to commend Fonnie Willis for taking a stand against injustice through her statement of support to consider the reopening of Imam Jamil's case, one of the greatest leaders of the civil rights movement. Those who stand for justice against the systemic oppression facing black lives in America and Muslim surveillance in a post 9-11 society must also stand in solidarity with the living black Muslim revolutionary who has been long forgotten. Free Imam Jamil! Right now!